So one of the most important skill that you can learn and how to be successful on Amazon FBA is to find great suppliers that you can buy inventory from. We know that Amazon is about buying low and selling high, but how do we find great suppliers to work with? So if you're a beginner or someone who is struggling, in this video, we'll go over the simplest and easiest way to find potential wholesale suppliers for your Amazon FBA business. We'll also go over step-by-step step and clear up the things on what to look for and what not to look for. So let's get started. So our goal is to find potential wholesale suppliers that carry name brand products that people already know so that way we can sell them on Amazon. And the main tool that we will be using for this method is going to be Google search. This is the exact method that actual retail stores like your mom and pop use in your hometown. They use Google to find these potential distributors that they can work with so that way they can order inventory to put in their physical stores. Now the beauty with this is that with doing the Google search it doesn't matter what category you want to sell. Whether you want to sell pet supplies, electronics, groceries, health and beauty, toys, it doesn't matter. This method works for any category. So first we're going to use the Chrome browser itself. Second one is we're going to use the Chrome extension called Amazon DS Quick View. It's a free Chrome extension that you can download. And third, we're going to use my personal supplier lead sheet. Uh, you can find the information to download. It's going to be free in the description below. So once you have everything, you're going to type this exact formula into Google. So you're going to have your category distributor plus your state or city where you live. So for example, I live in Florida. So this is what I'm going to search. So let's say I'm looking for health groceries. Okay, so health, uh, groceries, grocery distributor. Can't spell today, you guys. In Florida. All right, so that's exactly what I look like. So if you wanna, if you live in New York, you can type in health grocery distributor in New York, pet supply distributor in Orlando. So that's gonna be the formula that you're gonna use. It's pretty much a plug and play on the category that you're gonna be looking, distributor plus the city or state that you live. And to get your ideas flowing, you can even lean into your unfair advantage. So what I mean by that is I'm Filipino, right? So. For me, I know a bunch of Filipino groceries that many people do not know unless you know you're Filipino yourself. So for instance, I can type in, you know, Filipino grocery distributor in Miami, Filipino grocery distributors in California. So if you are a dog owner, for example, or a pet owner, you can lean into that unfair advantage that a dog or a non-pet owner might not know about. So you'll know about the brands or anything specific into that niche that you can definitely take advantage of. So it just kind of gets your idea and brain flowing in terms of leaning into unfair advantage. So once you put the formula into Google, let's go over on things on what not to look for. First is you want to avoid anything that is sponsored in terms of your search right here. So anything sponsored or advertised, you wanna simply avoid that. So that's gonna be uh, something that we're not even gonna open. And so the rest of it here is going to be free game. Second is once you start reaching out into potential suppliers, you wanna avoid the one that's kinda hiding their information in terms of pricing, uh, how many quantities you may need in terms of minimum order. So it pretty much kinda go with your gut and this is pretty much a sign that it's not gonna be a reliable supplier that you can work with down the road. By the way, if you have additional questions, write them in the comment below. I will answer your questions in the comments. And if you have found value in this video so far, I would truly appreciate your support if you can hit that subscribe button and comment and like as well. So after you had avoided the sponsored listing here, we're gonna open up potential uh, websites that can carry name brand products that people already know. So that is our goal. So keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and open this one right here. This one says whole, uh, wholesale food distributor. This one we're going to avoid because it's a government website there. All right. This one's a food distributor. We're going to open it up here. And one tip I can give you in terms of your first initial initial search is that you want to go past you know, the first page or all the way at the bottom because that's gonna give you another advantage because most people that are sourcing for potential suppliers, they give up after, you know, a few results. So you wanna go all the way to the bottom or the third or the second, fourth page in terms of looking for potential suppliers. So the next part is gonna be super important because once we're going to these websites, our goal is to find if they carry name brand items that we can sell on Amazon. So let's go ahead and look at the first one here, okay? And what you wanna look for is they either will have a tab in terms of products, you wanna go through there. So we're gonna browse under 
products here and let's just say uh, we want to look for, let's see what's good here, health and snack bars, okay? And some of these things, once you start selling on Amazon, you will definitely not even going to bother clicking. For example, let's go back to products here. Let's see, they have, uh, they don't have ice cream here, but if, you know, we can't sell ice cream on Amazon, so don't even bother on that. So some of these things, you'll start to um, learn what to avoid immediately in terms of that. So they have a couple name brands here. Let's see if we can, okay, on the left side here, you can see the brand. So this is where pretty much we're gonna look for uh, right off the bat. I don't know any of them except for Quest. I know they have like protein bars and stuff. So Quest is a good one. So what I wanna do is just double check and open up Amazon. So once you're in Amazon, you just wanna type a quick search in terms of the brand itself. So typing Quest Bar just to make sure, okay? So there's a couple Quest Bar listings on Amazon. So the specific one, they have a cinnamon roll. We're not gonna worry about that. We just wanna make sure we can at least sell Quest because once you start requesting for a uh, product catalog or brand catalog from this distributor, it's gonna have potential other Quest products. So we just wanna make sure it just exists on Amazon. So the next thing in terms of the brands that we are not familiar with, we're gonna do a search on Amazon. And this is where the Amazon DS Quick View can come in handy as well to help us guide and narrow down the good suppliers that we're only gonna be looking for. So another one is a Kind Bar here. So Kind Bar, I've seen this uh, around in terms of, you know, a uh, convenience store or even like the grocery store. So we'll just double check on Amazon here. All right, so a couple listings uh, exist on Amazon. So right off the bat, there's two potential brands that we can sell under this uh, distributor or supplier here. And you kind of pretty much double check and triple check other brands that you potentially work with. So once you request for that brand or product catalog, you have a lot of leads that you can potentially sell on Amazon. So the next part is we're gonna use the Kind Bar as just an example. And this is where the DS Amazon Quick View comes in handy because it's gonna show on the things of what we are going to be looking for. So these are two things what we're gonna be looking for. The first one is going to be the ranking. As a good rule of thumb, we wanna stay under 100,000 in terms of ranking on the category. And that is to ensure that our product that we're gonna sell is just gonna sell fast. Second thing what we're gonna be looking for is in terms of competition whether that's FBA sellers or with Amazon itself. If you are selling against Amazon, it's best as a beginner to avoid it. Or if you wanna look at FBA sellers, you wanna have a listing where there's not too many sellers that you're competing with. And I would say if you are competing with 15 sellers or below, that would be a great start. So that way, just to ensure that the price don't tank. All right, guys, so once you found the results, this is what the Amazon Quick View are gonna look like. The 17,538, that is the ranking itself. And right next to it is the category where it belongs. Then underneath, you can see the uh, FBA sellers. So Amazon is not on this listing, which is great. Then for FBA sellers, which is right under the 15 uh, threshold that we were looking for. So this can be a potential listing that we can sell right off the bat. And the next step you wanna make sure is that you can sell the brand itself. So this is what's gonna look like to just double check that. So what you wanna do if you are in your Amazon seller dashboard is just to click add products right here. And it's gonna open up the search bar. So you just wanna type in the kind uh, protein bar here just to see if you have authority or if you're ungated to sell them. All right, so we're gonna click new here and sell this product. That means that you can sell it. And if you are gated on a brand or if you're not allowed to sell it, it was gonna say apply to sell. So that is a great uh, information or step that you need to take before you start diving into the product itself and start purchasing it. All right, so that's basically the first website that we had open. We found some potential brands that we can sell. So now let's go into the other tabs that we had open. So this, this is the second one right here. Kihi National Food Distributor. They look like a, um, a trade show some sort so we're gonna head and skip this one here all right third one alimentech food reseller so what we're gonna do is go again products and see what brand they have so this one it looks like they sell on amazon themselves they have their own brand i'm assuming just based on this results here so this is a brand itself so you can either reach out to this brand or become a distributor as part of it here 
Let's go back to our results and start opening a couple more here. So these ones, again, you're gonna wanna avoid because they, uh, uh, they are sponsored. These are sponsored, okay? All right, Frontier Co-op. If you're not familiar, that's an OG wholesale website there. All right, HFD is the oldest wholesale distributor health net products in the United States, okay? Brands, vendors. So this one's a really old school website, just as they are one of the oldest um, wholesale distributors, but you can see right off the bat here, they have different um, brands. I think Nature's Way I've heard of. Let me see what this looks like. So let's look at Nature's Way here. I guess we're gonna look at Nature's Way here in terms of their ranking and competition. So most of the listings right off the bat is Amazon is selling on them. So it's best to just avoid this one and check the other brands. All right, so let's see what other brands. I think Quantum is Vitamin. Quantum brand. All right, so not much showing up in this brand. Let's check another one. As you guys can see from this vendor, there's so many brands or products. And if you are an Amazon seller, you just have access to thousands, if not millions of products out there. So to have uh, the mindset here is really important that opportunity is literally everywhere and your job is to just find them. All the potential products and profits is out there. You have to find them. And from experience, the best products or brands is the one that is not popular because the popular ones, a lot of competition is gonna be on that one. So if you can find like a low key brands or products that may, not many people know about, that's gonna be your home run brands that you're gonna be selling for a long time. All right, let's look at Tom's of Maine here, the toothpaste, I've actually used them before. So type in Tom's of Maine in terms of the Amazon search here. Pretty good ranking, all under 100,000, just uh, overview here. And six plus FBA sellers, one plus FBA sellers. So nothing crazy here in terms of competition. So this could be a great brand that we can sell here. So you pretty much rinse and repeat in terms of the brand, search in Amazon, see if you can sell it in terms of your account, see if you're ungated. Then after that, we're gonna add all of the potential uh, brands or distributors into our supplier lead sheet. All right guys, so this is the supplier lead sheets that you can have access. The link is going to be in the description below. So let's type in today's date, it's October 27, 10 slash 27. All right, sourcer and just type in Lester here. So if you have virtual assistants, you can give credit to whoever found the supplier name, which we do in our team. All right, supplier name. So supplier name for this one is HFD, Health Food Distributors. And we're gonna go ahead and just copy the website there. So it's Health Food Distributors. Okay, website right there. So next we're gonna look for their email, phone number, and contact name. Here you go, contact them. So we're gonna copy the phone number here and email as well. Copy the phone number, then the email, you're gonna copy the email. And if there's a contact name, not all of them is gonna have a contact name. So if there's one, you can just put it in there. Then on the other notes here, so we can type in, for example, like Tom of Maine's uh, brand. Any other notes that can be useful when you are reaching out to the supplier, it just makes it easier for you so that you have some something to refer with. Then the next tab off the supplier lead sheet is you have your first contact, email one, email two. It's just, again, for your history to kind of keep track of how many times you have reached out to the distributor. Uh, it's just good to have that in the back of your mind so that way um, you can know if they're going to be a good one or not because if they are harder to reach, then they might be just busy overall or if they can be reached in the first time that you're gonna be working with them. So again, these are little uh, things that you're gonna start learning once you start opening to different uh, distributors or suppliers. So your goal is to rinse and repeat this until you have a minimum of at least 20 potential suppliers you can work with. Then after that, that's when you can start reaching out to them, start sending them email, calling them, and work from there. Something to keep in mind is this is going to be a numbers game. The more potential suppliers you have in your lead sheet, the more opportunities you have to work with them or buy products that you can sell on Amazon. And if you wanna learn how to get ungated on any products or name brands, click this video right here. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later.